Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA, predicted phenotype, traits and GED match results of an early European modern human from Zlati Kun. Um, Zlati means gold in Russian, but uh, this is probably what it means in Czech too, from Czechia. This is what she is predicted to look like. With my Nashakot tool, she is predicted to have dark brown color eyes, snob shaped nose and black hair. With her ID tool, she is predicted to have uh, wavy hair. Uh, she did not have BH2 or BH3 or BH4 and it is most likely that she also did not have BH1, although that is very difficult to determine. She did not have any of the light pigmentation variants. Uh, in her entire file, you will not find any variants that have to do with light pigmentation. And she did not have any ginger variants in MC1R and she also did not have East Asian EDAR, so we have no reason to assume that she had East Asian facial traits. She does not have the European no-go learner mutation in the pro pro variation of DRD2, so higher odds of schizophrenia, uh, not, most likely not a modern European, and she's got A1A1 genotype in TAC1 of DRD2, which is a very interesting genotype because this is the genotype you will observe in various Neanderthals, Denisovans, monkeys, gorillas, all kinds of non-humans, non-modern anatomical humans will be having A1A1 here, and most humans most homo sapien humans have A2A2, so it's interesting that she, being a homo sapien, has A1A1 uh, with this variation, okay. Uh, she's got uh, the warrior genotype in COMT, uh, which means um, higher, uh, quicker dopamine reuptake, less dopamine in the system. It's a pretty non-European genotype, but, you know, this is the ancestral genotype, so everybody used to have this genotype before the warrior mutation came about in Europe. She's got this genotype in ACT1, which makes her prone to cannabis-induced psychosis. This is the ancestral genotype, so uh, most non-modern humans are going to have this score here. Uh, she does have the sociopath gene, which is surprising. This gene uh, is pretty ancient. It's, pretty, it's a pretty old variation. Even among the Neanderthals, you will find some variation when it comes to this. Uh, this gene, but in monkeys, there, there seems to be no variation in monkeys, so it's a human gene. And... Um, does not have EDAR, no East Asian facial traits, no shovel-shaped incisors, uh, no East Asian straight hair or epicanthic folds. Does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. Well, this mutation is very recent. It came about very recently, maybe in the Copper or Bronze Age. And this is an upper Paleolithic individual, we cannot forget that. Uh, does not have the anti-myopia, does not have the mutation that protects against myopia. I think this mutation would already be a thing at the time that this individual lived, she just happens not to have it. Now moving on to polygenic traits. She's got a pretty high risk score for Crohn's disease. Um, she's got a high risk score for Parkinson's disease. She's got a above average risk score for coronary heart disease. She's got a average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, she's got an average risk score for type 2 diabetes. Uh, she's got a very high risk score for cleft lip. And uh, she's got a high risk score for bipolar disorder. She's got a super high risk score for Alzheimer's disease. And she's got an average risk score for asthma. Now let's start with the GZ match oracles. This is what I choose to start with uh, because I want to see how much archaic or neanderthal or whatever admixture she's got and it does seem like she has some because for most europeans modern europeans it's typical not to score any archaic human and archaic african uh, monkeys and various non-humans mostly score archaic human for example gorillas chimps orangutans score up to 99 percent archaic human uh, whereas neanderthals tend to score around 60 or 65 percent archaic human followed by 30 or 35 percent archaic african so it seems that the archaic human is just sort of a general category that everybody who's not a modern human tends to score whereas the archaic african is more of a uniquely neanderthal component so she does have quite a lot of these components it seems that she has maybe seven or eight percent judging from this result of archaic admixture. This is what she scores with Eurogenes K13. It's kind of all over the place because she doesn't have a lot of modern drift associated with any modern uh, ethnicity that Eurogenes K13 is really looking for. Um, the distances are really high because there is no population that matches these kinds of results. Uh, no population that lives today really uh, would score similar to this individual in Eurogenes K13. Uh, this is what she scores with MDLPK11, and she's mostly scoring ASI, Ancestral South Indian, uh, also scoring some African. This kind of looks like what you would expect a Upper Paleolithic genome from Eurasia to score. She's actually closest to Ustishim Upper Paleolithic, which is quite interesting because Ustishim is an East Eurasian from um, from Siberia, I think, where she is a 
proto-European from Europe, but she is nonetheless very close to this Ustishim individual. This is what she scores with Harappa World, and it does seem that out of the modern ethnicities, she most resembles various South Asians, South Indians. Um, ben Israel Jew, I think, is from South Asia too. Uh, she's getting more of a mixture of Bengali plus Sandawe or Bengali plus various Ethiopian groups. And you will see this repeating with the G25. I actually simulated the G25 for her and with the G25 that I simulated, but this is a simulation, this is not what she would score with the actual G25, this is this, just the best I can get, because I don't want to spend money on this, right? Um, she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Burusho, Ongya, which is kind of like a typical Indian mixture, plus Ethiopian. And uh, this is her result with Af Africa 9 from Dodicad. Uh, I like this result because here you can see that the African admixture or the African um, related shift that she has is more so East African rather than Hoisan. Hoisan is the shift that you would see in Neanderthals, Denisovans, various uh, archaic humans from Eurasia. You would see mostly Hoisan shift. With her, it's mostly Omotic. With her, it's mostly East African, uh, which is kind of interesting. So in this way, she is different from the Neanderthals. This is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. It's kind of all over the place because she lived before the formation of all the major drifts. I think she even lived before the split between West Eurasians and East Eurasians. So what can you expect from this result, right? This is what she's scoring with Gidrosia K3. She's scoring mostly East Eurasian and West Eurasian, even though she is from Europe. And she's probably ancestral only to Europeans. I'm not sure who she's ancestral to. It's possible that she's also ancestral from East Asians. But she is from Europe and she lived in a time period when the distinction between Europeans and Africans and East Asians was not as great as it is today because as you go further in time, if the populations don't intermix, the drift gets bigger and bigger, more and more drift, the populations become more and more distant from each other, as I've tried to show you with this little co colorful chart that I've made on the bottom right. And uh, depending on the environment, sometimes the drift happens really quickly, as it happened, for example, with Jews. Uh, Jews went through a lot of drift really, really quickly to the point where it's so easy to distinguish them from even the populations that they're that are ancestral to them, it's easy to distinguish a Jew from a mixture of Italian and Palestinian, right? Even though essentially that's what they are, it's super easy to distinguish them, even though they've only been a thing for like a millennia, right? And with some groups like Europeans, East Asians, Africans, the drift took a long time, but by the, by the Mesolithic it was already pretty much concluded. By the Mesolithic you already had the European cluster, the East Asian cluster and the African cluster and they were all very separate, very easily distinguishable from each other. Uh, thanks for watching my video until the end. You can download uh, the raw data file for this individual for the Zlati Kun sample in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy what I do here on YouTube. Goodbye.